All right, so let's talk about what I think is the most important component of any electric vehicle, the high voltage battery. Most reviews, frankly, stop at the fact that there is a small and a larger battery pack available, which does give you different ranges. But I think the most important information here is not the difference in size, but the difference in battery chemistry. No ifs and no buts. Those are the famous words of Volvo's CEO during the launch of this, the Volvo EX30. And he's referring to the fact that Volvo are committed to have an all-electric lineup by 2030. And they're not doing it because of legislation, because of some policy. They're doing it because they fundamentally believe that electric is better for the driver and for society as a whole. More importantly, for our planet and the world we want to leave behind. I'm Luke. We're diving into the tech of the EX30. There's a lot of interesting things to talk about that most traditional reviews, frankly, leave out. Now we have to start by talking about the underlying platform. This is the basic building blocks which this car is built on. And different to other Volvos we've seen on the channel, this, the EX30, is built on ground-up electric architecture, which puts the battery pack under the passenger compartment and is able to push the wheels to the extremities, the extreme corners of the vehicle, both front and back. What that means for you as a passenger, the interior cabin space just feels a lot larger than any traditional petrol car or any electric car which has been converted from a petrol platform. So definitely very, very room in here. So despite being a compact SUV, in the cabin, it's actually quite roomy because of the underlying platform and technology. Now, this technology is the SEA, the Sustainable Experience Architecture. It's actually designed by the China Euro Vehicle Technology Group. They're a company based in Sweden, owned by Geely. Geely, of course, is the Chinese brand who now owns 100% of Volvo. And they're using this platform here in the EX30, but in other models which are under Geely's ownership, such as the Smart Hashtag 1, Smart Hashtag 3, and the Zeker X. So as we said, you can get either single or dual motor variants for this car. Perhaps the biggest talking point though here is that performance version where they give us a permanent magnet synchronous motor in the front and also in the rear. Now that's different to most um, dual motor all wheel drive designs because usually that front motor is actually a different type of electric motor which is more thinking about efficiency. But here they told you it's a performance model and they're giving us performance, right? So it's permanent magnets in the front and in the back. This is a huge deal, right? This is electric power really showing off. Do we need this kind of power? Probably not, but let me tell you, for those who do, it's available. So Volvo keep it simple when it comes to the region or regenerative braking, right? That's the vehicle's ability to recharge the battery as you are driving. And different manufacturers give us different options. Some have regen paddle shifters, some have different regen switches. Here it's literally just two modes. It's either completely off, where if you lift your foot off the accelerator, as you're probably used to in an internal combustion car, the car will just coast. Or then on the other end of the spectrum, they have their one pedal driving mode, which you activate from the center screen. And that, yes, does mean you can literally drive the car using just the accelerator pedal. Because as you lift off the accelerator pedal, the regen starts to come in and slows down the car. And at that point where you need to like completely stop, the actual physical brakes also kick in to completely stop the car. What's this experience like in the real world? Well, in my driving video, I'm going to be trying out this car on the road and I'll be telling you all about it there. So make sure you're subscribed and tuning in because that video goes live next. All right, let's discuss charging. Unfortunately, the answer to the question, how long does this car take to charge, is not a straightforward one. And it never really is with electric cars because it depends on a number of factors. So for example, obviously the battery size, the smaller battery will take less time to charge than the larger battery. 
not always, I'll tell you about that in a second, but for the most part it's going to be like that. Besides that, how much power you're able to give the car at one go is also going to affect the charging time. So the car comes with an inbuilt 11 kilowatt charger on AC that is running on three phase. So best case scenario with the car with the smaller battery, you're charging the full in five, just over five hours. Bigger battery, around seven hours. Again, this is best case scenario on AC. If you want to know your exact charging times, on say single phase for example because there's many options I recommend you go to the website EV database you look up the car and then you'll have a table at the bottom and you'll be able to check with based on the charger you're installing at your house how much time it will take to charge the car so that's an excellent resource I suggest you use now on DC which is our rapid charging uh, option which is on the standard CCS connection here basically both the small battery and larger battery charge in 30 minutes irrelevant of the size it's because because of the different chemistries here the ncm can reach a faster peak um, compared to the lfp and thus the charging time ends up being exactly the same for both cars so 30 minutes so if you're on a highway and you're driving and you stop to charge essentially it's a 30 minute best case scenario charge that is if you find a rapid charger of 153 kilowatt which is the larger battery or 135 kilowatt on the smaller battery but in both cases as i said 30 minutes for a charge all right so let's talk about what i think is the most important component of any electric vehicle the high voltage battery most reviews frankly stop at the fact that there is a small and a larger battery pack available which does give you different ranges but i think the most important information here is not the difference in size but the difference in battery chemistry in fact the smaller base variant of this car uses something known as an lfp battery the larger battery pack uses something known as an ncm battery so lfp lithium ion phosphate ncm nickel cobalt manganese these are both lithium ion batteries however critically there are a few important differences between them now lfp have sort of made this huge comeback so lfp is actually an older technology that originally wasn't used in electric vehicles because it has one or a few disadvantages for example it is a lot heavier per kilo it thus is less energy dense it can char it charges slower but there are a number of advantages you get with LFP, which now, as the market has already started to mature, the fact that other components in the vehicle are making up for the efficiency loss, now we're seeing manufacturers switch to this LFP technology. Frankly, it is cheaper. That is why it's available in the base model. It uses no nickel and no cobalt whatsoever in the battery. It actually uses iron and phosphate in the battery. Now, it is safer because it's, it's, it's able to take more heat essentially before going into say thermal runaway, which of course is a rare occurrence. But more importantly, and this is the critical fact here, it has a much, much longer cycle life. What is the cycle life? Cycle life is how long you can use a lithium ion battery before it needs recycling or, 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 or disposal essentially. So every time we charge a lithium ion battery, charge and discharge, that is one cycle. Now your typical NCM battery chemistry gives you between 800 and 1500 charge cycles. When we're talking though about LFP, you're looking at 5000 charge cycles plus. So this is a battery technology which lasts a lot longer before needing replacement and if you work out the numbers in your head of how long this battery is going to last the numbers are astounding my personal experience so i've had electric vehicles in my family for 12 years already believe it or not and we have we don't have any lfp cars at the moment because they are very, fairly new so our cars were all NCM over the years and there, what we've experienced here in Malta regards degradation is, is minimal we've not seen much degradation because all our cars were essentially of what I like to call the second generation battery technology which had one huge difference from that first generation technology which was the battery cooling 
Now, of course, cooling the battery has come out as a critical important factor in protecting its safety, but also its longevity. How long the battery pack lasts, essentially. What is this? This is a cooling circuit. In the case of this car, it is a liquid cooled battery system. So they're running coolant underneath the battery cells to keep them at that ideal temperature, which for a lithium ion battery has been proven to be 25 degrees Celsius. So when the car feels that it's getting too hot or too cold, it's going to heat or cool to bring it closer to that 25, because that's when lithium ion performs at its best. Now, in a very cold climate, heating the battery obviously uses energy from that battery. Same, go same goes for an it where it's uh, very cold, very hot, and you need to bring it down, right? You're using energy from the battery. In the case of Malta, because our temperature is very close, year round to 25 degrees Celsius, the cases where the car actually has to do this are minimal. So it's only those short bursts, those two, three weeks where you get that heat wave or when it gets really cold really cold in winter, right? Otherwise, the battery cooling is actually not having to work. What I do like a lot about this car is that the cooling is what they call active, which means irrelevant whether the car is being driven, being charged, or simply parked out here in the sun alone, it will, if it feels it's getting too hot, it will turn itself on and we will start to hear the battery being cooled because they want to protect this battery to last a very, very long time. So battery cooling, definitely cool. And I love the fact that it is active in this EX30. The EX30 is definitely a car that's getting a lot of attention because frankly, it comes in at a good price point. And what we're getting for that price point is actually pretty good, particularly when it comes to the EV tech. What does it feel like on the road? Well, that's the next video. So make sure you're tuning in. I'd like to thank Maverick for helping out with the technical Gazanza meet motors and volvo malta for their support with today's video and of course you the viewer if you want to support a bit more make sure you share and like this video you can join as a youtube member and you can help spread the message by purchasing the official merch link down below but as always i hope i've convinced you that the future like volvo thing themselves is electric